Great. So, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us at the New York Forum Tech Center. We're really honored to have Deputy Assistant Secretary uh, Phil Rieger with the Bureau of European and Eurasian Affairs at the Department of State. Um, he's going to make some opening remarks, and then we'll ask um, everyone to ask their questions, stating your name and your affiliation. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to, to you. Uh, there. I have been uh, in this capacity for the last uh, two years, over two years now, um, having been, of course, in Skopje for the three years uh, prior to that as, as U.S. Ambassador. Uh, and um, as I've expanded uh, my portfolio to include uh, Central Europe, uh, I see often how the Central European uh, countries uh, can give a good example to uh, the countries in South Central Europe. Uh, in the Western Balkans in terms of uh, some of the areas of, uh, of attention, things that need to be focused on, models of, uh, of how to uh, progress, uh, particularly in uh, the area of Euro-Atlantic integration, economic reform, rule of law. Um, I think uh, these are all things that, uh, that we will continue to focus on, working closely with our European partners, the European Union, uh, and its institutions. Uh, and frankly, I think in the last uh, year, uh, we have seen governments in the region who are breaking uh, from how things were done in the past, uh, and instead of getting mired in old conflicts, uh, they're looking to the future. Um, I think there's some realistic thinking about what needs to be done to improve the situation in individual countries, and of course that then reflects the situation in the region. And uh, leaders are making some tough decisions. Uh, but also some good decisions. And by uh, engaging with their uh, citizens, uh, discussing uh, the direction they're taking, the goals uh, in terms of reform, in terms of the European uh, path, uh, I think that's um, allowing them to take uh, new approaches to some of the long-held uh, narratives uh, in the region. I would note that in Croatia, uh, successive governments there stuck to a single goal, that is EU, EU membership. And of course, on July 1st this year, uh, that goal was realized when Croatia became the 28th member of the European Union. Uh, I was very honored to be uh, representative of President Obama for the events of Croatia's accession, along with um, Ambassador Merton, our U.S. Ambassador in Zagreb. Uh, and it reminds us that over a period of, of many years, uh, Croatia made difficult decisions, but committed resources, uh, implemented reforms, uh, and achieved their goals. Um, and the path, I think, shows that the, the door to the European Union and to NATO integration is open to the broader region uh, if states display the same level of commitment and uh, the ability to see through the reform process that is um, so critical there. And I would point out that we're grateful to, uh, to Zagreb uh, for sharing the lessons learned with uh, other EU and NATO aspirants in the region. We were just talking about uh, uh, languages and uh, the ability of uh, people in the region to understand each other. Uh, and I think uh, Croatia, having gone through this process, uh, has readily available a huge amount of documentation and material uh, in the Croatian language, which uh, even I, with a little bit of uh, help, <laughs> can, uh, can read and understand. Um, uh, and that just gives a, a boost in that direction. So working together uh, and pursuing those common goals is important. Uh, we've, of course, seen uh, a remarkable uh, engagement and, and uh, process between uh, Serbia and Kosovo, where both governments came to realize that uh, the status quo was not moving them or their people forward. Uh, and implementing an agreement, the uh, April 19th uh, agreement from Brussels on normalizing relations, and they're already beginning to see the benefits in terms of the European Union uh, and what uh, uh, it is uh, offering uh, for uh, Serbia to begin accession negotiations on its EU membership for Kosovo to work towards uh, a stabilization and association agreement. These are extremely uh, important uh, steps in this process, and the United States is uh, congratulatory of uh, both Pristina and Belgrade and of our uh, colleagues in the European Union for the enormous efforts there. We have, of course, uh, for some time underscored and supported uh, the process uh, of dialogue. 
And while there's still a long way to go in terms of implementing the agreements, we will continue uh, to do that in the months and years ahead, uh, working together to address the elections, uh, address the uh, challenges um, uh, in that. Uh, that includes the elections that will be held in uh, Kosovo, municipal elections to be held November the 3rd, um, something that uh, I think is a very important step for all the people uh, in, in Kosovo, but also uh, in Serbia for the region. Uh, that will be an important uh, process, uh, important step in moving the process forward. Speaking of elections, uh, I think it's worth noting uh, the successful, well-conducted elections in Albania. Uh, and. Um, uh, the reactions of, of both sides there, which uh, we addressed at the time as being statesmanlike uh, in terms of uh, the incoming and outgoing prime ministers, uh, um, that serves as an example of, of democratic process in the region. Now, it's important to remember that elections do not a democracy make themselves, something I've said uh, in the context of the region uh, frequently. Uh, it's what you do with those uh, elections. They were well conducted, um, and it gives the Albanian people uh, an opportunity uh, and the new government an opportunity to come through this uh, transition of governments and begin focusing uh, again on the Euro European reform uh, process or those efforts that are necessary to uh, become uh, a candidate for EU membership. Uh, we all recall that that process was stalled in Albania uh, due to the heavy politicization um, and uh, some of the disturbing trends. Uh, but with the elections now behind ourselves, behind us, and behind uh, uh, everyone in Albania, it's an opportunity to to get back to work. Uh, that means trying to uh, keep the the rhetoric, I think, at a, a good temperature. Um, to then focus on the requirements to work with the EU and its institutions. Uh, and in that regard, they will have the continued help and support of, of the United States. Um, I think, again, I would just uh, close my, my opening remarks by noting that uh, many of the problems in the Balkans, while complicated uh, by a world standard, by a historic standard, are not things that cannot be uh, overcome, uh, cannot be resolved with some focused uh, attention and pragmatic leadership. Prime Ministers Thatchi and Dacic have shown that. Uh, they've shown exceptional leadership in communicating with their publics uh, and pushing their governments to work constructively together uh, in terms of normalizing relations, which is good not only for uh, their situation uh, in their own countries, but uh, for the situation in the region. I would point out that on the other end of the spectrum, uh, while we've had some of the progress I've discussed, um, the kind of dynamic that we uh, have seen there, we have not seen in Bosnia. Uh, and there, uh, leaders have continued to focus on more narrow, uh, short-term political interests, personal agendas at the expense of longer-term goals, and that includes uh, their integration into Euro-Atlantic structures. We believe strongly that Bosnia and Herzegovina is a European country. Uh, the, the people there, the citizens of Bosnia and Herzegovina are, are Europeans and want to be part of uh, these institutions. Uh, I think it's important that uh, we have less talk about the conflicts of the past uh, and the same old uh, issues that uh, recycle from one year to the next. And as we look ahead to the fall, we need to see more commitment to building uh, strong, stable uh, institutions uh, and making the progress uh, in Bosnia. Uh, again, the United States uh, remains very committed to supporting Balkan states uh, in achieving those goals of European and Euro-Atlantic integration. Um, Croatia has already joined the EU, as we said, a high point of this summer. Montenegro is, is well on its way uh, in terms of uh, uh, working through the accession process. Um, and uh, we continue to see uh, countries in the Balkans uh, in Europe and see the e EU integration process as uh, the tool that will build stronger democratic institutions. Uh, so I don't need to tell uh, any of you here in New York or in, uh, or in Washington uh, or uh, your audiences uh, back in the region that uh, there are significant challenges that remain in terms of 
economic crisis, uh, just as everywhere else in the world, and certainly uh, in Europe, uh, the South Central European region has been hard hit by uh, economic challenges. Um, and we are continuing, for the U.S. part, to uh, support all of the Balkan governments in implementing reforms for job creation, for entrepreneurship, for foreign investment. When I travel in the region, um, these are very much uh, at the top of uh, the agenda we discuss uh, with local leaders and with civil society uh, and other audiences. Governments have got to commit to tackling corruption. I think uh, we have to remember that this is a region-wide problem throughout the Balkans, and it's not exclusive uh, to the Balkan region, but of course it is certainly a debilitating problem that saps resources uh, from uh, the rest of society. And there is uh, uh, a lot of economic reform, as well as reform in the broader context of rule of law uh, that needs to take place. That hinders uh, uh, economic development, hinders progress toward EU integration. Um, so to tell you uh, what you already know, um, the Euro-Atlantic integration of the Balkans, we believe, is essential to achieving a Europe whole, free, uh, at peace, and increasingly prosperous. That goal remains a cornerstone for U.S. policy in Europe, a key priority for the United States, for the State Department, Secretary Kerry, and the Obama administration. Uh, and we believe that that integration is what will bring better standards, uh, rights, opportunities, and will foster uh, the regional and international partnerships uh, that are needed to face the challenges we all face together in the 21st century in that region but also more globally. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, it's an ongoing dialogue between Serbia and Kosovo. Mm -hmm. You've been witnessing them really taking part in almost every meeting that is happening in Brussels. Uh, implementation of the reached agreements, how is that going? It doesn't seem that it's going very well. Today, they were, uh, uh, the, the uh, talks on the telecommunication would fail. They were supposed to say. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's, uh, yeah. I, I th <laughs> again, according to the media, is always a, uh, a slippery slope. Um, and I think, you know, words like fail uh, in the context of, uh, of these types of ongoing processes. Uh, I think this is a process, and uh, as, as I mentioned, as you know, um, uh, in April there was an extremely important uh, breakthrough, that is uh, the agreement that was reached April 19th. Uh, the first uh, agreement, as Kathy Ashton described it, uh, toward normalization of relations between Kosovo and Serbia. Um, and uh, we echoed uh, our praise for um, the courageous leadership the hard work that was done uh, by uh, leaders and teams on, on both sides, uh, from Belgrade and from Pristina, and also, of course, the uh, incredible work of uh, High Representative Catherine Ashton uh, and her team uh, and the European Union, um, with the support, of course, of, uh, of all the member states of the European Union in moving that process forward. And we will continue to remain engaged uh, and supportive in every way we can uh, you will recall that the Secretary of State visited the region uh, last uh, October. She was in both uh, Belgrade and uh, Pristina as part of that trip, along with Kathy Ashton, to underscore uh, our support for this. It's an EU-led process. It's an EU facilitation. Uh, I do not uh, participate in the meetings of the dialogue itself, but we have uh, been available to, uh, to encourage both sides uh, uh, through our embassies, uh, through uh, my own engagement, the engagement of others in the State Department, and Secretary Kerry has been extremely supportive of this, has spoken uh, frequently with uh, High Representative Ashton, again, underscoring our support uh, for uh, the continued process. Implementation is, of course, key, and implementation can be the hardest part. Uh, you reach an agreement, uh, and then you have to actually uh, make it work. And that's what, uh, what they are doing now. Um, I think there has been uh, some progress, but I don't want to try to characterize on a day-to-day -day basis whether, uh, you know, we're up or down. 
uh, whether there's success or failure, ultimately the success will be seen in uh, how both countries do uh, in moving forward in creating greater stability, which will lead to greater economic opportunity, will lead to better lives for all the citizens. Uh, and one big step in that will be the elections that the uh, agreement calls for to be held uh, November 3rd, the first round, uh, local elections throughout Kosovo. Uh, we believe this is very important. The OSCE has been working very closely uh, with the European Union and uh, with authorities to uh, make sure we can all contribute in every way to make those elections successful. This is an opportunity for citizens uh, throughout Kosovo and all of the municipalities to uh, elect their own representatives to uh, represent their interests and their goals moving forward and uh, to participate in, uh, in institutions which, uh, are, after all, are designed specifically to make people's lives more comfortable, more secure, uh, so that we don't have to go on with the, the tremendous uncertainty in the situation that we've had. So broadly, uh, this is, uh, uh, I think, a very positive uh, direction. Uh, the agreement has demonstrated direct, uh, respectful negotiations as the way forward on, on uh, solving issues throughout the region, even what are considered the very toughest issues. Um, and uh, uh, I've been in touch with uh, local uh, leaders from both uh, Serbia and Kosovo. I've been in touch uh, just recently with my EU uh, counterparts. Um, it's a constant process, and uh, they do need to keep working. Uh, a lot of people have continued working through the summer. Uh, I think there are a number of people who are not having summer holidays as they continue to try to, to work on these these Did issues. You said the Kosovo parliament that is not working during the summer. Well, I think there are, there are a lot of parliaments, uh, a lot of parliaments, our own Congress that are, are taking recesses. Hope they use uh, the time off as an opportunity to meet with their constituents, uh, to talk about what they're doing, to understand the positive way forward. Um, you know, we have uh, uh, in many instances congratulated the, the Kosovo parliament, for instance, on, on uh, the wisdom in passing some of the key legislation, because the United States believes that this is clearly the way forward. There's so many things uh, that uh, we can work on in terms of uh, economic growth, consolidating uh, rule of law, uh, particularly if we get more stability through the dialogue process and more normalcy. Normalization is critical there. So. That will be uh, high on the agenda this fall, um, and um, uh, certainly, as I said, uh, let me underscore once more, uh, the United States continues very much to see that as the path forward, and, and will continue to support the EU in every way we can, and support both countries uh, in, in their courageous effort to move forward. So I, I really think uh, the people of, uh, of Kosovo, including those in the north, uh, regardless of uh, whether they're uh, ethnic Serbs or Albanians or uh, 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 whatever uh, nationality, whatever ethnicity, um, they're citizens. And they understand uh, what I think these uh, leaders are, are telling them, that this is now a new opportunity. Uh, so that we don't have to continue on with this very untenable, unstable status quo, uh, where uh, the rights and interests of every citizen can be protected. Their lives can become more normal uh, by participating in uh, this electoral process, by participating in the institutions which are designed, of course, uh, to provide uh, services and stability um, and that's why the United States has, has so uh, supported uh, the dialogue and, and this prospect. So I think uh, as people understand uh, what uh, these elections are about uh, and what an opportunity uh, they are, uh, they will come and participate. Um, I think uh, 
my experience is that the, the people throughout Kosovo, including all of those in the north, uh, are smarter than sometimes perhaps uh, uh, some in the media may give them credit for. And uh, the OSCE, uh, which has worked uh, so hard and so successfully throughout uh, the region, um, including in uh, the northern part of Kosovo, but in the rest of Kosovo, uh, and has, uh, I think, strong ties uh, to the people. Uh, OSCE will have a very big role in this and facilitating that. I think uh, that is uh, a, a very positive uh, uh, thing. We've, we've seen that so many times uh, in the region when it comes to uh, facilitating elections. Uh, so again, this is a key part of, uh, of moving forward, a key part of normalizing people's lives. And uh, I think uh, there's a lot of work to be done leading up to November. Uh, but we would certainly encourage uh, people to participate because that's how they're going to uh, make their voices heard and say, this is who we want to, uh, to represent us to make sure that our uh, concerns, uh, that our interests are represented uh, and uh, the, the issues uh, that we have are addressed fully um, by authorities across the spectrum. Uh, implementation of the agreements. Mm -hmm. Look, it's the same situation in every kind of agreement. Uh, these are difficult issues, often emotional issues. But the leadership has shown uh, courage, but also, I think, uh, a pragmatism. Uh, Prime Minister Dacic, Deputy Prime Minister Vucic have spoken to that uh, in terms of what they want to see for Serbia, what their priority is. Certainly, Prime Minister Thaci. Uh, and other leaders from Pristina ha have spoken to this uh, and underscored the need to uh, resolve some of these issues, to create greater stability, to allow resources, time, and the engagement, including of uh, those of us in the international community, to focus more on the things that will really matter in terms of boosting the economy, creating jobs, promoting investment opportunities. Now, to do that, everybody has to have goodwill and has to do their part to implement. I think uh, High Representative Ashton, who remains very involved in this, um, watches this very closely. And uh, as you know, uh, this dialogue was very much uh, established on the basis of requirements set forth by the European Council. The European Council said, hey, Serbia, if you want to move forward on the European path, this is what has to be done. And High Representative Ashton said, the choice is yours. I am here to offer my good offices if there is serious dedication to this effort. And that's what we saw from Belgrade, was a serious determination uh, to move forward. And what was accomplished in, in a period of one year has been quite remarkable. Uh, the same thing from the Pristina side, because it takes both sides to not only have the will and desire to move forward, to overcome the status quo, to resolve problems, but uh, the dedication to see it through. Uh, and that's why we have encouraged uh, continuous uh, attention to implementation. All of these things uh, require hard work. There are working groups that have to work out details of this. Um, and uh, obviously, if, if one side uh, doesn't work, then, then an agreement isn't implemented. And then you don't reap the benefits of implementation. So it's uh, establishing the trust and uh, the ability to communicate, which I think has been critical in this as well, to understand each other's fears, uh, each other's concerns, each other's politics, uh, to be able to respect those um, and to focus on the things that really are important, to focus on uh, what has to get done and not get distracted by the rhetoric that uh, is sometimes uh, prevalent uh, in the region 
and to focus on, on the real work at hand. It's a very clear uh, set of principles, set of things that need to be accomplished uh, in terms of, uh, of institutions. And I think great progress has been made. But it will require constant attention and constant work. That, after all, is the fundamental basis of democracy anywhere. It requires constant attention, constant work uh, by leadership and participation by citizens who take an interest in their lives, who don't just just uh, sit back and, and uh, uh, let things uh, go, but who take an interest and use the institutions provided for uh, and, and use those to collectively uh, work together uh, for a better future uh, for themselves, for their children, for their grandchildren. I mean, that's what this is fundamentally about. And it's a question of stepping out of, of some of the emotion, some of the rhetoric, uh, and saying, this is an opportunity. Well, we have so many challenges in the world in the 21st century, so many challenges in, in Europe, um, so many challenges like we have here in the United States. Uh, we have to use every opportunity we can to remove some of the challenges that, that can be dealt with and resolved and focused together on, on these other things. Uh, so, Albania, as you mentioned in your opening remarks uh, about the elections recently, mm -hmm. would you like to elaborate a little bit about how do you see these elections uh, for the future although we are in a transition period now for the next 30 days? Well, again, uh, uh, let me underscore that the election, I believe, in June represents a significant milestone in, in Albania's democratic evolution. Uh, it was a key test uh, as Albania moves closer to achieving EU candidate status. My European colleagues uh, made that very clear that everyone would be watching these elections. Indeed, the international community did all we could to uh, support the election process and uh, to monitor it. Um, uh, I think uh, Albania joined some other countries in the region who have, uh, in the past year or so, had uh, successful elections that, that meet the standards that OSCE and, and uh, ODIR have established. Um, I would just reiterate what I said, that the hard work of, of building democracy doesn't end when the votes are uh, passed, uh, votes are tallied, and the, the winners are announced. Uh, and we are pleased that the process of forming a new government seems to be going along smoothly. Uh, the new parliament, as you note, will convene in September, uh, and the United States will continue to support and encourage uh, the new government uh, to act on the powerful mandate that they now have from the voters and focus on EU candidacy, get back uh, on the path of addressing the key reforms that are necessary, some important uh, legislative steps were taken b just prior to the elections, uh, but strengthening rule of law, uh, encouraging transparency and accountability, uh, promoting economic development, and again, I can't uh, underscore enough, uh, fighting organized crime and, and corruption. It's also worth pointing out that uh, after elections you have uh, a government, you have a coalition, but you also have an opposition, and the opposition has an important role to play in uh, democracy and in realizing Albania's uh, EU aspirations. Um, I personally uh, have uh, congratulated the, uh, the new leader uh, of the uh, Democratic Party, which will be uh, the largest party in the opposition. Uh, I congratulated Prime Minister Berisha on uh, his um, uh, years of, of leadership and, frankly, having led the country through uh, these well-conducted elections, and I congratulated the Prime Minister-elect, uh, Mr. Rama, uh, when I saw him. Uh, in fact, we spent some time together uh, when we were both in Zagreb for the accession uh, uh, festivities uh, for Croatia's uh, entry into the European Union. I thought that was actually quite symbolic because it was a chance uh, to talk to Mr. Rama about um, our interest in seeing Albania continue to move forward to get back on the uh, European uh, path to work closely with um, the institutions from Brussels, uh, which frankly have shown uh, enormous uh, determination to help Albania uh, move forward on this. And so it will be a busy fall. There will be uh, uh, new ministers uh, to meet. I look forward to, um, to meeting them. And, and of course, uh, uh, none of this uh, revolves around individuals. It's about uh, institutional continuity and the United States uh, uh, 
uh, and our embassy uh, will remain uh, fully engaged in, in supporting our, our Albanian uh, friends, our allies, uh, in their desire to move forward for a more stable, more prosperous country, and particularly focusing on the reforms necessary for the EU path. Thanks. Many experts are saying that uh, while the ATMP support, of course, was instrumental in getting peace, it failed to overcome the soft division of Bosnia. That's the term that is used uh, sometimes. Uh, because it's institutional shortcomings. Uh, almost on a daily basis, we are witnessing the uh, uh, abuse and abusive rhetoric, from, uh, especially from Mr. Dodik. Uh, who is uh, using every single opportunity to diminish the efforts to consolidate the Bosnian state. Uh, at the top of the iceberg was yesterday, actually, when we had the uh, hurting of one of the Bosniak uh, uh, returnee, if I can uh, put like that, the, the gentleman who wanted to uh, go to his uh, prayer service. It was a holiday yesterday. His name is... Uh, Nazir uh, uh, Dar, da, uh, Dar, Dargan and uh, he was hit by 30 years younger man uh, uh, severely hurt etc. Now do you think that the biggest problem remain in the wrong name of the smaller uh, uh, entity Bosnian entity, our smaller entity named uh, RS Republika Srpska as even the late ambassador Holbrook confessed at the end, and that it somehow uh, imply the uh, national exclusivism rather than European uh, principle of inclu in inclusiveness, and that somehow it feeds the nationalism and even corruption and everything what is going on with that from the other side. So what you can say on that, what can we do on that, and how we can move on that circle? Thanks for, for bringing up Bosnia, because as I uh, indicated uh, in my remarks, and certainly in, uh, in my remarks and engagement in Bosnia itself, I was in Sarajevo in July, I was there earlier in May, uh, I gave a, an important speech on behalf of the administration um, uh, and on behalf of Secretary Kerry uh, at the university. Uh, American university. At the American University in, uh, in Sarajevo. Um, the real challenge in Bosnia is uh, having leadership that engages uh, on the clear agenda for uh, the European path toward integration into European institutions and, and to NATO. That's what's been stated uh, across uh, all lines, political um, and ethnic lines, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And what we've seen for years now uh, is political leaders who instead pursue very narrow agendas. Um, the, the Dayton Agreement, as you rightly point out, uh, was important in that it ended a horrible war. Uh, I knew Ambassador Holbrook uh, very well, worked for him uh, in later uh, years, um, and I think everyone in Bosnia would appreciate and understand uh, the importance of ending that horrific uh, violence. Uh, life has returned to uh, to normal in so many ways uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, people go about their daily lives. Uh, uh, you know, daily activities uh, are, are conducted. But yet, uh, as I mentioned in May, um, there is uh, uh, still a lot of problems. People deserve better. They deserve more opportunities and. Uh, the notion that uh, it's simply the Dayton structures that are at fault, I, I think, is a false uh, an excuse used by a number of political leaders who actually prefer the status quo. Uh, they don't want change because uh, the, curtain, certain, the current situation is uh, very much uh, in keeping with their own uh, interests and priorities. If the Dayton institutions and Dayton structures are not meeting the needs uh, of the citizens, of the people, if they're not efficient, well, then you need to change and adapt them. Uh, the Constitution of Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, makes it very uh, able for 
uh, the people and the leadership to uh, work through the institutions to make necessary changes. We've done the same thing in the United States in the history uh, of our Constitution, uh, in the history of our democracy. Uh, the original Constitution has been amended uh, numerous times, uh, taking care of, in some cases, some serious flaws, as we had to deal with, uh, say, the issue of slavery, uh, civil rights, uh, leading to the, the fundamental concept of equality. Well, you can see the same challenge in Bosnia and Herzegovina, where, uh, as the European Co Court of Human Rights has made clear in the Sadich Finci case, change needs to be made to fully reflect and embrace uh, true human rights and equality. Um, and so Dayton gives fundamental structure. Uh, as we have reinforced and the Europeans have reinforced, Bosnia and Herzegovina can have a very positive European future as a single country. Uh, and it's up to political leaders, with the support of the international community, and certainly the United States, along with our EU partners, uh, and, and so many others, um, in terms of civil society, non-governmental organizations, have been uh, there to help and have done a lot for Bosnia and Herzegovina. But we can't solve the problems for the people there. We can't live their lives for them. We're not going to uh, lead the country. That's up to the country itself, its institutions, its leaders, uh, ultimately its voters who select those leaders. Uh, and as I made very clear uh, in the remarks in May, we look to leaders to engage, to uh, show credibility uh, to their uh, constituents uh, in terms of uh, working towards uh, common goals. Compromises uh, often need to be made. Uh, we'll recall that in March, uh, political leaders went to Brussels. Uh, they looked and worked together for finding a compromise, a way forward on the Sadich Finci uh, issue, as one example. Uh, by the time they got back to Sarajevo, their agreements had fallen apart. Uh, I note that they're going again to Brussels, and we would October hope that first. they will use October 1st uh, with the strong support and, and uh, good offices of uh, uh, our colleagues, my colleagues uh, in Brussels, uh, to again find a way forward on this. Uh, these are not uh, the kinds of issues and questions that should take so many years and prevent so much progress uh, in order to, to resolve and, and move forward. Uh, and the EU in that regard has the full support of uh, the United States as we work together uh, to support uh, that path. Uh, if you look at uh, the issue of federation reform, uh, where the United States, through our embassy, uh, supported in concept uh, the effort to look at how uh, the Federation could be reformed. Make those changes. Uh, if things are not efficient, if things don't meet the needs of, of the society and the citizens, then look at how you can change them. We can't do that for you, and we didn't. We simply offered support uh, for experts from civil society to look at the issues, to talk to a wide range of, of citizens, get their views on what worked, what didn't work, what they would like to see happen. And they put those together in a very uh, transparent fashion with a conversation and a dialogue uh, that was open to all to participate in uh, and came up with 188 recommendations uh, of all kinds, small things, bigger things. And uh, we would very much hope to see um, that they will, will uh, bring, uh, take advantage of, of uh, the recommendations to, to draft and introduce uh, and pass legislation and amendments uh, that can make governance more efficient. That's how you do these things. That's how we've done it. That's how anybody's done it. Uh, that's how the European Union has uh, worked and evolved in its own development. Uh, these things are imperfect, and to make them better is a constant effort to engage and set aside uh, personal political agendas and um, come to common understandings of how you can work together and be responsive to the needs of, of the citizens. Um, so I would call upon Bosnia and Herzegovina as politicians to resume work on the Euro-Atlantic agenda as soon as possible including uh, resolving registration of defense property, another 
uh, issue that had a political agreement and resolution, um, but uh, some politicians decided uh, to Ooh. not to go through with that. Uh, and complying with the Sadish Finci judgment is critical, um, and that will allow the country to resume progress on NATO. Uh, the NATO sector, armed forces, has been a very successful element of uh, uh, Bosnian uh, society. And uh, as we've seen through so many other examples, progress on NATO uh, suggests more stability, uh, suggests a better investment climate, and has proven to be uh, very positive in terms of uh, attracting foreign investment, which of course is critical for, for economic growth. Addressing some of the specifics mm -hmm. you mentioned uh, in your question, I think we often have to overlook the, the rhetoric, which again is part of the personal uh, and political agendas uh, as it's delivered. The Balkans is so full of rhetoric uh, that it becomes fairly tiring, and you just have to look beyond that. Most of your uh, citizens do, is what I find. Uh, when I ask people in Bosnia, well, what do you think about what this person said? Well, you know, that's, uh, that's just the rhetoric. So let's look beyond that and look at substance. Uh, when there are incidents, uh, crimes, uh, things that are unacceptable, well, those happen all over the world. It's something called the human condition. What you have to have is a society, a structure, a rule of law, which addresses uh, those, uh, those issues. And in this case, I believe that uh, there was uh, a rapid response on the part of law enforcement uh, to address uh, unacceptable uh, uh, instances of violence. Who's going to be the new U.S. ambassador to Bosnia? And as you know, the outgoing ambassador Moon said that uh, there is it's became a counterproductive. It's not rhetoric; it's just a Bosnian agenda uh, uh, that he is not going to meet uh, the president of the smaller entity, Mr. Dobby, because it became counterproductive. Will the new ambassador meet? Well, uh, it's up to the president, to President Obama, to. Uh, uh, announce any uh, nominations uh, for the for the next ambassador to Bosnia. Uh, ambassador Pat Moon, who's my good friend, has done tremendous uh, work as the United States ambassador, as the president's personal representative. Is um, uh, highly admired uh, by uh, the administration, by Secretary Kerry. Um, is uh, is a terrific diplomat. Has been incredibly dedicated. Uh, it's unfortunate when we see uh, some of the rhetoric that we have, these ad hominem personal attacks. These are only uh, an example of, of weakness of character, uh, political desperation on the part of those who, uh, who participate in that. Uh, an ambassador uh, is a representative of the president and government of the United States. Uh, that is his or her role. Uh, and. Um, I think Ambassador Moon has, has done a terrific job with that, uh, supported by an extraordinary team of diplomats um, in, uh, in Sarajevo uh, who are around the country, also uh, uh, our office in Banja Luka, uh, who can engage uh, not only with uh, the officials, but also with average citizens, civil society, um, at, at all levels and throughout the country to understand uh, their needs and challenges, to help uh, uh, them understand our goals and policies, uh, and I think uh, most importantly to understand that, that they have an individual responsibility to hold their leaders accountable for making the changes. Uh, you know, it's a, a common uh, electoral uh, uh, question to ask, are you better off uh, than you were four years ago or three years ago or since the, the last elections? And I think. Uh, indeed, um, people do ask themselves that. And uh, for too long, we've seen uh, a sort of allegiance to uh, parties. Uh, uh, and I think it's important that people ask themselves, um, uh, why am I voting for this person? What has this party or this leader done to advance my interests? Uh, and if you want to focus on uh, moving Bosnia and Herzegovina into the European Union, just as its neighbor Croatia has done, just as its neighbor Serbia is uh, starting to do as they look forward to beginning accession negotiations, <laughs> um, then it's important 
uh, that uh, the people speak out as well. Uh, we saw it with the effort for federation reform. Let's hope that the leadership can embrace those ideas that came from uh, the grassroots, came from civil society, uh, and, and make things work better. Uh, certainly, uh, they have available to them uh, the support and good offices of the international community. Uh, the Office of the High Representative, the European Union Special Representative, the U.S. Embassy, so many other uh, players uh, internationally, they are there and dedicated, as they have been for more than two decades, to trying to help Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, move ahead and move forward. Uh, but obviously, it takes the full engagement and the genuine desire of leadership to reflect the true wishes of the people of Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, if they want to, to move forward in that. So in the United States, uh, you have a partner. Uh, we want to work with uh, leaders who are credible, who keep, uh, uh, keep their word. And um, I'm sure that's what uh, uh, future ambassadors will continue to do. That's what future deputy assistant secretaries will continue to do. Uh, it's certainly what Secretary Kerry uh, is dedicated to uh, and President Obama uh, as we continue to focus on so many parts of the world and, and challenges in our foreign policy. Certainly uh, our policy uh, in South Central Europe and the Balkans will be uh, consistent and continuous, uh, and that is to see through uh, our goal of a Europe whole, free, and at peace. Thank you very much. Thanks. And congratulations for that. Okay. Thanks for this hour. It's, it's a useful format. It gives us a chance to have longer uh, conversations. Uh, appreciate it. And we can try to do it again. Maybe we see some of you during uh, Anga time. Yeah. Thank you for spending the morning with us. Thank you. Thanks to all the staff here. We look forward to it. Yeah. Great. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you.